Welcome to Dream, Declare, Deliver with your host, Chris Garrell. Join us each week as we explore how to live a life by design by applying the tools and techniques of emotional intelligence and personal transformation. Here's Chris. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Dream, Declare, Deliver, uh, learning to feel segment uh, where we talk about um, the experience of our emotions and how emotions are great keys to understanding who we are, what we believe to be true, how, how we react in the world, and, you know, basically the source, you know, how we get to source in our own experience. One of the things that I'd like to discuss uh, in, in this session is simply valence, um, positive and negative. When I first started doing emotional intelligence training, um, you know, I ran into a lot of people whose basic categorization of emotions was good and bad, you know, or not so good and not so bad. Um, but, but the range and color and diversity of all their emotions were lumped into those two big categories, good and not good, good and bad, not so good, not so bad, you know, but, but each time they experienced an emotion, um, the emotion wasn't named so much as it was given a valence and, and then tucked away as either a good thing or a bad thing just happened. Um, and then, you know, obviously, where do we want to spend our time? You know, a lot of people, when they have a, a, a positive emotion, um, think that that's just a wonderful thing. It's just, you know, it, it just happened to me. And, and, and so we, um, you know, we kind of, I don't know if we d dismiss it so much as we, uh, we look at it as just a nice thing that happened. Um, and with emphasis on the word happened. Um, because, you know, even with a positive emotion, joy, laughter, um, you know, feeling good, gratitude, um, you know, uh, bliss, uh, all kinds of things, awe, being awe-inspired and, and, and all the positive emotions, peaceful, um, you know, happy, um, humorous, you know, all those things we feel like often because they're positive things that something sparked the happiness in us and we were able to emote, uh, we were able to feel that, that positive feeling. Um, it's worse on the negative side, you know, because often when we first try to analyze what our, our so-called negative feelings are, we want to look for what's the cause. And the cause 99 times out of 100 for most people is something out there. You know, that thing happened. The politics that's, you know, everywhere on our, our screens uh, today, um, the, the violence, the mass shootings, you know, all of those things happen outside of us and happen to cause us negative, as we call them, negative emotions. Um, I would like to contend in this session that there is no valence. Emotions just are. They're part of our human functioning. You know, your heartbeat is not good or bad. Your breathing is not good or bad. Oh, yes, we could evaluate it. We could say, oh, my, my heart is racing now and, and that's not good. Or, um, my blood pressure is up and that's a bad thing. Um, or, you know, I'm feeling calm and my pulse rate is uh, lean, mean 50 beats a minute and just, you know, sitting in that alpha state or something like that. Um, um, but when we when we start labeling things as good and bad, they lose any ability to inform us. And what I mean by that is if you think of something that just happened and you experience it as a bad thing, then you either have to be the saint in shining armor to take it on and counteract that bad thing, or you get the contagion all over you, you end up feeling bad because a bad thing happened out there and, um, and there was nothing that you could do about it. Um, but when we don't label things as good or bad, it becomes information for us. 
you know, and what I've been talking about in the learning to feel segments here is that um, th- that uh, emotions provide information, valuable information about what just happened and what we think about what just happened. So, you know, as I've, I've said, and I will say countless times, the function of the brain is to receive data uh, in the form of electrical transmissions from our senses, to receive that information, process it by comparing it to what it already knows, what it has learned in its lifetime. Um, you know, no matter how old or young we are, it's been learning since our very beginning. And so it's been amassing these data banks, if you will, of resource information. So it gathers that information, it compares it with what it knows to be, to be, you know, uh, some kind of information. And then, you know, based on what it understands that situation or that those, those impulses and that in, in information coming in to be, it projects into the very next moment or a moment down the road or 10 years from now. It just projects forward. Uh, most of the time, for most of us, what it's doing is projecting into the next moment. It's, it's really looking at, well, what does this mean for me to, right now? Um, although there are emotions that that come from thoughts that are long-term projections, um, there are emotions that come from that comparison of, oh, here it comes again. That's just like the last time. That's just, you know, the whole thing happening all over again. And, you know, and we end up um, not being able to to use the information very well if that projection is labeled with a positive or a negative. When we stop labeling things, judging things as positive and negative, as good and bad, um, on a on, on some dualistic scale, you know, and and believe me, even if it's good, not so good, a little bit less than good, that you know, shades of gray all the way down to you know, pure evil or you know, this is bad stuff. You know, there are gradients across that. But it's still in that multiple layers of, of gradients. It's still there's an ultimate good and an ultimate bad. So, you know, there's somewhere in the middle that our minds have set as this is the flip point, you know, on this side is all good and on that side is all bad. Um, and it's a tendency that we have. It's something that we always do. We are always judging things. Our brain is always judging things. I, I, I want to separate me from my brain, my, my soul, my, my self from, um, from the, the thing that's happening inside me, inside my brain, inside my heart, inside my liver, inside my body, and, and, and so on, you know, because, um, you know, as the philosophers say, if in the sentence, I see myself as, you know, there are two people speaking. There are two people involved in that. There's the I that is seeing, and then there's myself as, you know. And so the myself as is what that brain is referring to. It's referring to that body of self-knowledge that we have amassed. Um, good, bad, strong, weak, whatever it is. It's, it's a body of information that's based on our experiences, our results, the things that have happened as a result of doing this and went down that road before I turned left before I fell into the manhole before, you know, going left is not good, <laughs> you know, going whatever it is. We have that information based on our experiences and the results of those experiences. Right. The I that sees myself, I want to separate out because that's the part of me that can think about this whole process. So when the I that sees myself as a fool, a jerk, not worthy, what, whatever those things are, or superior to other people or a brainiac or whatever the labels are, you know, you can, you can have any kind of label in there. But when, when the I that sees myself over here, um, distances itself enough to have perspective, I can look over at that and say, is that who I want to be? Is that the being that I want to be? And if not, then what I need to do is look at the emotions to discern what are the thoughts and beliefs that are causing those emotions. As we've talked about before, the brain manufactures most of our emotions. You know, Now, there may be some that are 
automatic, you know, we notice that, you know, babies naturally giggle, um, naturally find fun things to do with their toes and fingers and exploring and all that kind of stuff. But what they're doing is they're learning about this self, myself. Um, and they haven't yet gotten the ability to separate, you know, I from myself and, and, and be the observer of self. That's something that comes much later in life, usually late teens and um, in early, early 20s. And so as we mature um, through our teenage years, there's there's plenty of times when in our teenage years that inability to distinguish my I from myself, you know, gets us in trouble. You know, we do the wrong thing. We do things that are impulsive yet that aren't monitored or controlled by our thought process or the eye that sees itself. Back to emotions now. So we have this plethora of emotions. There, there are charts and, and, and lists of emotions that run upwards in 500 different emotion words. And that's just the English language. Other um, other languages have emotions that we don't, you know, we don't distinguish, you know, uh, Fijians um, and Samoans, you know, the islands people in the Pacific have multiple uh, emotion words to describe family, to describe comfort, to describe joy, but they have no, they have no words um, to describe anger and sadness. They don't use those words in their culture, whereas we have a whole raft of words, uh, you know, that fit into the anger and and um, uh, revenge and, and um, uh, rage and all those kinds of things that we that we experience as Westerners. Um, you know, so that, that I just was at a workshop um, recently where, you know, we had one session on um, Huga, uh, Huga. Uh, which is a Danish word um, that that is the warm, comfortable feeling when you're wrapped up in a cozy blanket, have a hot chocolate in your hand, and it's raining and cold outside. You know, it's the, it's that feeling of warmth and comfort of being near a crackling fire and in and feeling just the warmth um, being all pervading, knowing that the, the world is a lot colder and nastier than what you're feeling right now. That is a definition of some sorts of the word yuga. Um, uh, and it's spelled H-Y-G-G-E. Um, and you will look it up. But, you know, the point is that different cultures have different emotions. So we may have 500 emotional words in the English vocabulary, but when you add to um, all the other cultures and things like that, the range of human emotions is quite extensive. And yet most of us, most of us can name mm, 20 emotions, maybe, um, before we start going um and er and ah uh, and, and, and running out of things to say. Um, when I've asked people to name emotions, see how many emotions they can name, um, as an individual, they'll get, you know, 15, 20. Um, as a team of people, if we have, you know, 10 people in a room, we'll probably get 50 to 60 emotions, not 500. So what what that means is that we, you know, we've collapsed the range of our emotional experiences down into the manageable few that we can describe or name. So it is really important for us to to be able to experience the emotion without a label of good or bad. You know, because what what are you really saying when something's good or bad is the the feeling that I have associated with the emotion I don't like. You know, it's an opinion about the emotion experience, which I call the feeling. You know, so I differentiate again. I'll, I'll say this multiple times during these um, programs. The the differentiation between an emotion and a feeling is that the emotion is what this complex array of things that are happening inside the mind and body, and um, and the feeling is the experience, the somatic experience that you have on it. So let's say we have 
an emotion. We don't have a name for it yet, but we have an emotion and the feeling that we have is sick to the stomach. You know, the, the emotion is something, you know, we call it bad because it's making me upset. You know, my stomach is churning. Um, I feel tightness in my chest. I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, my shoulders are going up to my earlobes and, and, um, you know, I'm just getting all tensed up. And we tend to label that as, as a bad feeling. Um, instead of if we took the bad out, if we're able to say, so I feel my body tightening up and that communicates to me some sort of protection. I want to protect myself. What are the thoughts that I'm having right now that I need to be protected from? You know, because my body's tightening up, it's it's doing that autonomic fight, flight, freeze kind of thing that is natural uh, self-defense. It's a natural evolutionary process for our survival. Yes, 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 all those things. But I get to to look at once I take the, the the positive or negative out of it, I get to look at what is the thought right before that emotion. You know, whatever it is, I haven't named it yet, but I can think what is causing me to want to protect myself. I can I can ask myself those questions. And then if I can ask a good question that says, you know, what is it that I'm thinking about that's causing me to want to protect myself? Then I can go to the big power pack question, which is what is the belief that that comes from? Because it's the beliefs that are at the foundation of all of our emotions, all of the thoughts that produce our emotions, those beliefs, the world is not a safe place, I'm not good enough, or, you know, whatever it is, I, you know, I'm a pipsqueak and people are going to pick on me, um, you know, this always happens, blah, 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 blah. You can identify those things for yourself. But the point is, you can't get there if you've just already slam dunked it and closed the door and said, this is a negative feeling or this is a positive feeling. You know, I don't get to look at those things and what causes that. Now, why would it be important to do the same thing with positive, so-called positive emotions? If we take the valence off of that and just not label it as, oh, this is a really good thing. Because what do we want to do with it if it's a really good thing? We just want to sit and bask in it, right? So when we when we have the ability to to look at I see myself, you know, and look at what are the thoughts going on when I'm feeling happy, when I'm feeling elation, when I'm feeling love, when I'm feeling attraction, when I'm feeling awe, when I'm feeling inspired, you know, when I have those kind of sensations in my body, I get to look at what are some of the what are the emotion labels, you know, what are the thoughts that cause those things? And what are the beliefs? Now, it's important for me to identify those beliefs that result in what we call positive emotions, love, joy, peace, gratitude, and so on. Why? Because that helps me identify who I say I am that is producing that kind of thing. And likewise, if we take the valence off the negative things and we pour it back from the feeling to the emotion, to the thought, to the belief, we have the ability to look at what does that say about myself? Now, I see myself is able to take action. The I is able to say, is that who I am? Is that who I want to be? There was a time in my life when I was in a really dark place. That's the only way I can describe it. I can't make years add up. Um, I know I lived in four different places and the numbers don't add up with the number of years that I was in this, in this terrible depression, you know, and, and I, I just, I, I, I really couldn't extract myself from the feeling until one day I was sitting in the dark in my office Um I lived in my office because it was I couldn't afford rent and um, a, and a place to live. So I, I rented a place that had a back end to the office behind a wall. And I pulled out a sleeping pad and a, and a bag and slept in my office, and, you know, a functional homelessness, you know. But I was sitting there in the darkness and and it suddenly occurred to me, this is not who I am. What I'm experiencing right now is not who I am. 
I who sees myself, is seeing this beaten, sad, depressed, semi-suicidal, um, angry person. And the I said, I don't see that as who I am. That's something that's happening over here. What are the thoughts that I have? What are the beliefs that I have that are causing me to sit here in this dung heap of a, of a, you know, Job kind of place, you know, um, feeling sorry for myself, feeling sad, feeling lost. You know, what are the thoughts that are causing me to, to result in those kinds of emotions and feeling states? And what are the beliefs behind that? And I sat up, I was up most of that night, um, just detailing what are the, the beliefs that I have about myself that serve me? And what are the beliefs that I have about myself that do not serve who I say I am? And that day, I changed. You know, that day, I started doing things that were, I see myself as, not the myself. You know, I started changing my belief structures and the result was I changed my job. I found the woman of my dreams to whom I've been married for the last 32 years. Um, I've, you know, I've just reinvented every part of me, my, my career, the way I interacted with everybody. I said, this is who I am, not this, you know, and I got access to that. Because I had enough wisdom or enough knowledge about how emotions function that I was able to dig back to what the belief systems were that were causing my feelings, my emotions and my feelings in that. So if I were to just say it's good and bad, this is bad, this is getting worse, this is worse and worse and worse, I'm trapped inside the negativity of that. But when I don't label it as good or bad, this is, you know, like, why am I feeling this way? Well, the thought I had was I had gotten divorced and I loved my children. Um, and and so the thought that was there that was causing this, you know, feeling of sadness, this deep grief was I love my children and I have just put myself in a place where I'm distanced from my my children. That's not who I am. I love my children means I get to be with them. I get to support them. I get to support their mom in, in everything that they do, in all their school activities, in their dance recitals, in, in their education, in every aspect of it. And so that's who I started being because that's who I said I am, not this over here. And so the sadness was actually a good thing. If you want to go good and bad, the sadness was a good thing because it pointed me to what was my real value. I was grieving because my real value was I love my children and I want to be with them and I want to support them. And I want to be the best dad in divorce that the planet has ever seen. And I made up my mind that day to do that and to show up with them, to support them, to go up, give their mom a night off, um, you know, so that she could have a life of her own and I'd take care of the kids, get them to bed and all that kind of stuff on and on and on. And I did that for years, you know, and, uh, and, and I think that was part of my salvation was, was differentiating and not seeing it as, as a negative thing, but as a vector that pointed to what was really positive and what was helpful in, in, in deciding who I am. So, you know, long and short of this, this little rant is that, that when we make our feelings and emotions good and bad, we, you know, first off, whitewash any labels that we can have that would help us better understand what the uh, what the thoughts and, and and beliefs are that are that are antecedent to that emotion um you know so when we when we whitewash it then we don't have access to that information when we take away the label of good or bad we can see that a negative what we think is a negative emotion what we think is a a downward emotion um is actually maybe this you know coming from a source that is extremely positive we don't get that information if we just take it as as positive or negative. We we won't go looking for it, or we'll whitewash it, you know, sweep it together with a whole bunch of other things that will pollute our understanding, and 
you know, kind of disallow our ability to get into uh, digging into what the thoughts and, and beliefs are behind that. So taking off those labels and just seeing emotions as is, there are things that we do, just like your heart beaters, a thing that your heart does, um, just like your lungs breathe in and out. That's a thing that they do. Um, you know, our, our emotions are just things that human beings do, um, very complex things that lead to feelings in our body um, that come from thoughts and beliefs in our mind. And from our experience, but when we're able to to look cleanly at them instead of labeling them, we're able to use emotions in a way that's extremely helpful for us in moving us forward in in getting the life that we want to live um, in daring to you know to go where we really want to go um, and take the risks that are associated with growth and development. So I hope that makes sense to you. Um, uh, the net net of this whole presentation is no labels. No, they, things aren't either good or bad. They just are. They're information that help us course correct throughout our day and throughout our life. Have a great time. Um, and I hope to see you back on, on one of the next um, podcasts.